uh, on this uh, developing story. Again, an indictment against former uh, President Trump happening potentially at any moment. Thane Rosenbaum, uh, distinguished professor at Tour University and criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor and adjunct professor at Cornell University School of Law, Randy Zellin, here with us. Uh, Randy, uh, the of course, we're hearing, learning that the jury foreman remains after the grand jury has left. Uh, Jack Smith apparently has returned to his office a few blocks away. Is, is this, as our executive producer likes to say, is the air crackling with excitement, so to speak, uh, from a legal perspective? Is this indictment about to go down? Think of John Hancock, because you need the four persons, John Hancock, on the indictment. So certainly that is a telling sign. But this has become the watch party of all really depressing watch parties. <laughs> I mean, not even John Gotti was indicted three times at the same time. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Thane, uh, just as a reminder uh, to people, because once we get it, uh, we'll try to let you know the specifics of, of what is in it. But w we believe from, I mean, this has been going on like a week and a half, yeah, uh, from some information, uh, there, there could be three statutes addressed. A conspiracy to defraud the government, obstruction of an official proceeding, uh, essentially deprivation of rights under the color of law. Um, your thoughts on the appropriateness of these charges from what we've seen so far? So the first thing that's interesting, Bob, is remember when we talked about the select committee on investigating January 6th, the congressional committee, when they referred their findings with a request to the Justice Department to bring a criminal indictment against Donald Trump, they weren't talking about those counts at all. They really weren't. So it's interesting as if the case shifted. And I'm sure when I was on your show, I said, do they have to do what the committee wants? And the answer is no, they don't. The uh, Justice Department obviously went about its business, impaneled a grand jury, and came out with its own theories. For instance, how many times did you, Katrina, and I talk about incitement to riot? Right? We were always talking about incitement to riot. Why? Because the Congress was fixated on the incitement to riot. All they showed was that Hollywood movie about the incitement. I don't see that here, right? This case appears to be, uh, have much more moving parts. It's as if it's before January 6th and after January 6th, and it entails a broader conspiracy to overturn the presidential election that deals with election workers and state officials and uh, uh, electoral ballot counting and uh, defrauding the government by claiming that the election was stolen. You're seeing a very different strategy. And guess what? Here's a reason why I, I'm Jack Smith. I might wait a few more weeks. It looks a lot, lot more like the Georgia case than it looks like the case that came out of Congress. It really looks like it's fixated on a conspiracy to pressure people, pressure campaigns, replace people with a different slate of electors. Maybe if I was Jack Smith, I know that Georgia's coming down in two weeks. Let's do it together. Hmm. Uh, Randy, what do you think is Jack Smith's ultimate goal here? Is it to just simply get uh, the indictment? Is it going after a conviction? Is it to tie up the former president with more legal fees and more legal woes? What do you think is, is the strategy and the ultimate goal? The first two for sure. The, the third one, no. This is not a civil case where in a civil case, yes, it becomes last person standing, battle of attrition. If I can outspend you, I can outlast you. But I think Thane really brings up a tremendously profound point, which is great trial lawyers are great storytellers. And a jury can only follow a story that they can embrace. Incitement to riot, you can embrace that. All you had to do was watch television on January 6th. You're watching the riot. Now suddenly it's a Civil War era statute that was designed to stop the white people from suppressing the black vote after the Civil War. Who's going to be able to follow that? Conspiracy to defraud the United States. To me, this is becoming too Pollyannic, too intellectual. Yes, if a judge was going to decide no. President Trump's fate, maybe I could understand that. But if you think you're going to get 12 jurors to agree unanimously that this Civil War statute makes sense, it's like the time that the government thought about going after Martha Stewart for securities fraud when she stood up and said, I didn't do anything wrong, and her stock price went up. 
Um, <laughs> which, by the way, she owned 88% up. So, uh, <laughs> but like that goes. Uh, uh, then we'll get to you in a second. I, just very quickly, what, what's the uh, feeling Jack Smith has right now, you think? What, what's, mm -hmm. Is there a nervousness before you actually release an indictment or is just, you know, business as usual? I, I think there's anybody who cares about what they do, you're always going to be nervous. But Jack Smith, I think, strikes me at least as someone with ice water in his veins. He goes straight ahead without fear of favor. He doesn't get into the noise, doesn't get distracted by the noise. But man, you are talking about just earth shattering. You talk about yeah, drilling. Char charging a former no, president. You talk about drilling for shale, and you're not fracking here. You, you, you're blowing stuff yes. Yes. up here, right. and it's just mind-boggling. Yeah, Thane, this is, uh, uh, would be a first historically in our country. Your thoughts? Well, remember, you know, there were people, first of all, I love when you have Randy on the show. He really brings it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, what he said, too, is very interesting, because that issue about the Civil War statute, it's never even been used for rioting. <laughs> it's only been used in corporate malfeasance for tampering with witnesses and destroying documents. So when he said highfalutin intellectual exercise, this is even tough for a judge, right, Randy? This would be tough for anyone. How are you using this statute in this particular situation? But look, you know, when we were talking about the New York case, right, brought in criminal court, not federal court, you know, and that case went first, I know I was on your show and I said, wow, that's, a, that's probably a shame for the uh, prosecution because all the other states probably or other cases thought they were much stronger than the falsification of the business records. Now it seems like there's no restraint. Like whoever's got a potential <laughs> indictment, bring your indictment, bring it one at a time. We, we, we'll get in line. It, it's a very fascinating thing. You never would expect that the indictment is more important than the conviction, right? Because prosecutors normally go, I'm not bringing anything. Unless it's unless political, right? Sure. Yes, exactly. I'm not bringing anything. Well, if it's, if it's political, it's backfiring. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. fucking blow it. I better bring what I can bring and win where I can mm -hmm. win. And I don't want to pile on because if I pile on, I'll lose a portion of America that's going. It looks like you're really piling on the president here. They're saying, yeah, we are piling on and we don't care. We don't care what it looks like. You can use the word weaponization all day and we'll say, all right, whatever, weaponization, non-weaponization. Mm -hmm. We're bringing all these indictments. We're going to tie yeah. this guy up in court forever. Hmm. We're going to paint him as evil. And that's how we win, win the next one. And Trump right. says bring it. Uh, yeah, all right, all right. And Trump says bring it. All right, we're going to leave it there.